The connection today is actor Claude Rains. The film is They Won't Forget. It takes place in a small town in the Deep South. On Confederate Memorial Day, a pretty young student, played by a very young Lana Turner, is found murdered in her school. An ambitious district attorney, played by Claude Rains, decides to take the opportunity to prosecute the case in the hopes that it'll help his campaign for the Senate. Having very few clues, Rains latches onto some circumstantial evidence and uses it to prosecute the dead girl's teacher, played by Edward Norris, who is an outsider from the North and is obviously not guilty of the horrible crime. Like many Warner Brothers films of this era, it's loosely based off a real case. Knowing that makes the film more unsettling to watch, and its message even more important. It's another example of how hate can make us do horrible things, but this film shows how some people can manipulate others through the use of anger. None of the townspeople realize their puppets having their strings pulled by Reigns, and since Reigns is running for a seat in the Senate, I can't help but feel that there's some commentary on the American political system. This is the film that established Lana Turner as America's sweater girl. Audiences were entranced by both her beauty and acting ability in this film. I can definitely see why. She's not in the film for very long, but she makes an impact every second she's on screen. This was just a small preview of the talent she had. Now with that being known, people might think that the film goes downhill once she's gone, but that's not true at all. After she's gone, Claude Rains steals the show. Rains is primarily known for his booming voice, and he uses it impeccably here, especially during the courthouse scenes. Combined with his violent mannerisms, he is a ruthless monster who preys upon people's naive mindsets and is not afraid to tear apart the meek in order to get what he wants. It's truly one of the greatest performances of his career. I'd like to also highlight Norris's wife, played by Gloria Dixon. Hey, she's another connection from the last movie. She's a little more on the somber side throughout this film. Her subtle mannerisms stick out in this era of filmmaking because many actors tended to be a little more flamboyant when it came to being sad. Her portrayal makes her feel more human and relatable, which makes the audience sympathize with her tragedy much more. The film is also very well written. This is the early work of Robert Rawson, who would go on to become a writer-director and would go on to create some great classics like Body and Soul, The Sea Wolf, All the King's Men, and The Hustler. It's clear that he had talent because this story is structured in such a way that it makes it hard to see which direction it's going to go. He also leaves a lot up to audiences' interpretation. Part of this was for artistic integrity and the other part was because of the Hayes Code. I realized while writing this that this film has many similarities to the first film I reviewed, Fury. While doing some more research, I found out that Fritz Lang was originally offered to direct this film too, but passed because he didn't want to be typecast as an expert on lynching. I really wish I could talk more about the third act of this film, but I really don't want to because I'd rather not spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. However, I will say this. The last act is easily one of the most suspenseful and gut-punching third acts in American film history. Even by today's standards, it's still pushing the envelope. If you haven't seen it, then give it a watch and figure out what I'm talking about.